Today I'm going to talk about shift registers inside of an FPGA, show you how they're used, and how to create them in both Verilog and VHDL. Let's get started. So first of all, what is a shift register? A shift register is almost always created by registers or flip-flops. So those are the individual um, low-level flip-flops inside of your FPGA, which uh, look like down here, where you have a D input, Q output, and a clock, which which uh, clocks the input to the output. And if you're not familiar with how flip-flop works internally, I recommend checking out my video uh, on flip-flops first. All the flip-flops share the same clock, um, so the data propagates from the input of the first one to the, to the output of the first, to the input of the second, output of the second, input of the third, etc. for however many bits you want to shift. Each flip-flop is one bit of shift. Um, and that can be confused for a FIFO, but the two are slightly different. FIFOs, um, shift registers push data through, and there's no pulling, there's no pull side. Whereas a FIFO pushes data into the FIFO, and then there's something else that will pull the data out of the FIFO. The shift register just blindly pushes the data in, and when it gets to the end, it, hopefully there's something there to receive it, because it's just going to drop it to the floor if nobody's there to look at the data. And they're useful for delaying by some number of clock cycles. So for example, um, if you put some input into this first D input of this first flip-flop here, it will take four clock cycles, one to go through this flip-flop, two to go through this one, three, four, to get to the output of the fourth flip-flop. So that will give you a four clock cycle delay from the input of the first to the output of the fourth. That's a good use for a shift register. Um, I'll talk about specifically why that might happen. Um, they are also useful for converting some serial data to parallel data and converting parallel data to serial data. I'll give you an example of each one of these. So first of all, let's talk about delay. So let's say you have some data coming in, I data to delay, and you want to shift it uh, by eight clock cycles. You can do that by creating this signal here, R shift, which is of type standard logic vector. This is a VHDL, VHDL example. And you create a simple clocked process here, which generates some sequential logic. And into bit zero gets the data that you want to delay. And um, that's all you need to do for the input data. That's basically setting up the, the first flip-flop. And then um, in this case, I'm going to be creating a left shift. So it's going to go from the least significant bit up to the most significant bit. So starting at zero on the first clock, it's going to uh, once the first clock's done, it's going to be at the output of the 0 and the input of the 1. Um, then it's going to be output of the 1, input of the 2, um, in, out of 2, into 3, etc., until you all get to bit 7. And then you've had 8 bits of uh, 8 clock cycles of delay. So this is a pretty standard way of how to create a left shift right here. You take the, you do 7 down to 1, get 6 down to 0. And you, this is just a shorthanded way of saying 7 gets 6. 6 gets 5, 5 gets 4, 4 gets 3, 3 gets 2, 1 gets 0. You could do all that in those individual instructions, but this is just a faster way to express that same idea. And here's the exact same thing in Verilog. It looks very, very similar. The data comes into bit 0, 7 down to 1 gets 6 down to 0, and that creates your, your left shift. 8 register, 8 clock cycles of delay. Boom. If you want to delay for more or less, you just change how wide the shift is and uh, look at the least, look at bit 7 or look at the me most significant bit. Um, that's how, ma how many clock cycles of delay you're creating. Next, converting serial data to parallel data. Um, let's say you have a UART receiver. It's another example um, that I've done in the past for the Go board, um, which is an FPGA development board. If you're not aware of it, check it out. Um, it's one that I made and uh, had a Kickstarter, did really well. Anyway, UART. Uh, so UART is taking a byte uh, and sending it one bit at a time for the, for the transmitter side, and then on the receiving side, you're receiving one bit at a time. So you have this thing that's a byte, you want to pack it into something that's a byte structure, but you're only ever getting one bit at a time. Um, so here's the receiver side. You, in a UART, the data is sent least significant bit, oh, that's a typo, I should say bit first. Um, so sh so if you want to do least significant bit first, you want to shift down to the right, uh, my right. So you want to start 
putting the least significant bit in the most you want to get the put it in start with the most significant bit which is kind of counterintuitive in this case I'm starting with bit 7 because it goes from 7 to 6, 6 to 5, 5 to 4, 3 to 2, 2 to 1, etc. all the way down by the time it gets to bit 0 it's the oldest data so the first data that comes in gets has to go through the whole shift register and the least significant bit ends up in the in bit 0 once the whole shifting is complete so it looks very similar to the delay example I just did. Um, and then down here, I just, I'm just i checking to see um, if the bit index is less than 7, I'm incrementing some index. Um, and then otherwise, if it's equal to 7, then I'm saying the, the byte is complete at this point. And now I can look at the data that's in uh, Rx byte and know that it is a complete received UART byte. Uh, and also just one thing to note, this is the same code as as this using um, like you can index into a byte or any any array any register array by using some some index um, so this is kind of like in, in C where you might get at a particular part of an array um, same idea here where you're indexing into a particular part of a bit array um, at this particular bit index um, this does the same exact thing so there's two different ways to do the same code. There's always more than one way to skin a cat in FPGA land. Uh, the, for the converting parallel to serial data, here is the UART transmitter. So on the UART transmitter side, it's the opposite. You have a byte that you want to ship off to uh, serially one, one bit at a time. Again, it's least significant bit first. This, what, this time I didn't make the typo. Um, so you want to start with bit 0, send that out, then send out bit 1, then send out bit 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and that can be accomplished via a shift register. So that's what this, these two lines are doing here. Again, you could also index into the bit array uh, using this some bit index like you do in C, if you prefer to do it that way. Uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for shift register. Pretty quick video. Um, they're useful, they're good to know about, um, and uh, thanks for watching. If you want to support this channel, the best way to do that is to subscribe and then also get yourself a uh, Go board. So that's my FPGA development board that I created, that kickstarted, super successful, great for beginners, great for people who want to have buttons and switches and LEDs. There's a VGA connector on there so you can make Pong with it. Check it out, it's the best way to support my channel and keep me making new videos. Thanks very much.